started and here is the shared screen. Awesome. So um, welcome everybody. So the first topic to the agenda is regarding the Azure storage, um, the Azure file storage outage we had um, last week. So basically what happened is the service um, automatically recovered by itself last Thursday. Um, I'm still waiting for information from Microsoft um, to know what happened. So basically what's happening now on our side is the service was relying on Azure file storage to distribute um, to files, to generate um, checksum for the files. And now the Azure file storage is usable. We can mount it, we can list the file, we can do all the things that we need to do. So typically the, the official location is now running. We are still running on the full byte right now because I'm waiting to know if the, the official location is reliable enough. So at the moment we are waiting for Microsoft to confirm um, or at least to tell us what was the issue. Um, they asked us seven to 10 days to investigate in order to understand what was wrong. Um, so that's, that's the current state, nothing moved there. Um, since it's working correctly, I would be interested to move, uh, to redirect the traffic from the fallback situation to the official location. Um, I'll keep the fallback situation in case something goes wrong again, but the problem is I would prefer to, to redirect the traffic to our Kubernetes cluster, which is, um, more appropriate to handle the loads than the second machine that we are using as a fallback. So um, there is in the notes a dashboard where you can see that um, by using the fallback service, it increased the loads on updated Jenkins.io. Um, so that's why I would be interested to, to revert that change. Any question, Mark, on this? So the the you have a timeline. I would love for us to get back to using the official the official production scale rather than a fallback. Are you envisioning doing that over the next few days? We've got a good time right now. This is Thursday and Friday are U.S. holidays, so the load will probably be lighter over those two two national holidays here in the U.S. at least. Uh, or or is it you're just trying to find the time now? Is there a date? So I think uh, I think it would be nice to do it on Thursday. I don't want to 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 work on that. So we just we just release a new weekly release. So I would not change anything neither today or tomorrow. But Thursday sounds like a really good time. Um, it, there is no risk technically because um, it's just a DNS record that we need to update, and that's it. So. I, I can I can definitely switch to DNS on Thursday. So no, so that's that's really elegant because that means that when new builds new new releases are published, they're still they're even today referring to two separate names: get.jenkins.io and package.jenkins.io. But the, right now, the, the DNS records for those are the same, and what you'll do is you put them back to having two different IP addresses. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, so get the Jenkins.io will be redirected to the Kubernetes cluster, while package the Jenkins.io will rely on the machine that we are running. I mean, that we are running historically. And then we get the benefit that next week we will do a weekly release on Tuesday and the LTS on Wednesday. So, by the next weekly release. And if there's a problem, we can flag it and say, oh, we have to do this or that in order to assure that the LTS arrives okay. Yes, exactly. Okay, then Wednesday next week, LTS of Jenkins 2.263.1. Oh, oh, speaking of which, um, I just need to remind myself, I'm going to put a separate action item here, a separate topic here, uh, LTS release prep. Okay, back to you, Lola Gay. Um, next topic is about monitoring um, the packages. So this is something that I've been talking for a while. The idea was to monitor 
the Maven repository, repo.jenkinsci.org, to know what is the latest Jenkins version that we can download. And so from that Maven repository, we know, we have a way to know what's the latest LTS release and what's the latest weekly. And so the idea was to create a data dog um, custom check that fetch that information from the Maven repository and then monitor get the Jenkins.io to know if we published um, if we publish um, the appropriate um, distribution packages. Um, I'm happy to, to say that it's now working. Um, so there is also put a dashboard here. So the idea is right now, because of the way we release weekly and LTS and so on, we first do a Maven release, um, first do Maven release, which means that we update the, um, the remote Maven repository and then we create the packages and, and we publish the packages. The idea is now that we know that there is a gap of around 20 minutes between the moment we publish the release and the moment we create the packages, um, the idea would be would be to to reduce that gap to be sure that when we release everything is ready, um, and so we don't have to wait twenty minutes to have everything. Um, so, so, so yeah. your checks will not be harmed by the acceleration that you'll do of bringing those things closer together. They'll they'll still be okay. What do you mean by my check will not be? Well, so so today, latest package available here shows war, for instance. So when war package, and I think there's a way I can change the this view, isn't there? Because we we should we can actually see this thing in its time scale. Well, oh, here we go. Change this. If I adjust this. Instead of oh no, it's not adjustable. No, so so this is the public URL, so you cannot ah. adjust this. So okay. if we want to to put that to a different uh, time frame, I mean, feel free to ask. Um, this is just the URL that we that we let other people to use. Otherwise, personally, I'm directly looking at um, the dashboard inside that Okay. Um, um yeah may i will increase the size but in this case we we just saw we just saw that today because today we released the weekly we saw a few hours ago that there was a gap for the weekly release in that dashboard yeah, and, it, and i think you were right it was a 15 or 15 to 30 minute gap between more availability and packaged debian for instance or and MSI installer, the worst case one. I just want to clarify here that the war that we are monitoring is not the one from the Maven repository, is oh. the one from get the Jenkins So I'm so there is a Python, so I wrote a Python script that read the Maven repository metadata file to know what's the latest version, and then I do some um test some queries on, on get the Jenkins audio. Um, based on suggestion from Garrett, um, I'm going to switch from get the Jenkins audio to archive the Jenkins audio. The reason to that is because get the Jenkins audio has stats about how many times we download the package. And I'm not sure how that query is done on the service. So I what I fear is um, I fear that we increase the number of the number of time we download yeah, a specific version. Um, so that's why I'm going to query directly a mirror that we know that we automatically um, update each time we do a release. Great, excellent. Any question on this? None for me. Um, Thanks very much for implementing. So the next topic is regarding the Windows Docker image. Um, if I understand correctly, uh, the current situation is the Docker image is ready to be built and published. The problem is it's taking a significant time to build and publish the images, which affects um, security releases. And so now Garrett is working to identify how to reduce the time um, of that process. Um, Garrett? Yeah, so that's um, a, a PR went up to remove what we what was felt to be like the unused 
Windows Docker images that were being created and tested. Um, so it's only currently doing Java 11 and Hotspot. Uh, so it, it's it's very it's very quick now. And then that Docker, the, the pull request there just adds an extra one. So even so, it's still it's down from four images to two images. Um, so it, it's significantly faster than it was. Um, so but I like, think yeah, yeah. longer longer term, I think that PR is good to go. Um, longer term, I think we want to we we want to work out how to better parallelize um, those Windows builds. We can we can improve those definitely. And you'll keep complaining that Docker image building is too slow. He has to wait an hour during core security releases for it. Right. And I think this is this is exactly trying to address that concern that Daniel's expressed, right? That, hey, a one hour build for the total set of Docker images is too long. And, and so, Gareth, you've, you've, your reduction from four to two, because these were built built in series, right? So it was building each image one after the other, not, not even running them in parallel on the same machine. Well, it's actually the testing that takes the time, or it seems to be. The, build, the building is, I think that's relatively quick, mm -hmm. um, but it, because it, it builds them all and then tests them all one after the other. Um, and that's the bit that's taking the time. Yeah, so that's, and it, and so that's it moves, an annual yeah. issue. So Daniel's issue is just that there's so many builds and he has to run them three times. And, and the three times are for three different. It's for current LTS, previous LTS, and um, uh, weekly, I think. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, right. Multiple, multiple executions of the scripts. Sure, weekly and LTS. Even if he doesn't do we have to LTS minus one, that already doubles it just weekly in LTS. Yeah, I mean, normally waits about an hour for, during a security release for it. Okay, all right. Those talking about maybe staging support would help if there could be a way of staging them into a different artifact repo beforehand and then his issue would go away. Could we start into that question? That's a really good one. And I'm not sure. Should be able to stage them in Artifactory, I think. It might mean some script changes, probably, or at least some pipeline changes for security releases. Yeah, I thought today that the Docker image generation was distinct and separate from the release build process, that it, it just consumes a release and detects it on a clock. So I assume Daniel was launching those Docker image builds when he had the, the security war built. Then he has to launch that interactively to reduce the time as much as he can. The problem is he has to wait for the war to be one public and two. Right. He's doing he's, he's doing it before he can publish the advisory. So right. if he could build from a private war and publish to a private repo and then have a separate script for just promoting it. Yeah, I think I see what you're saying. Uh, registry and publish. Now, Olivier, I'm assuming that your your concepts around um, around what is staging haven't touched this yet. It was mostly about staging the war, the Debian file, the RPM, the MSI. Did I understand correctly, or did you also consider how to stage Docker images? So the, I, I never work on, on the current staging environment. Um, so we already published a private work file. So the private work is already available. Um, the thing is right now we have different Maven repositories for each of security releases. Um, but the, I mean, what we would have to do here, we would have to create private Docker, uh, Docker repository. Yeah, and probably we would have to work on the script for doing that as well. So, we are, I think we are quite far from staging um, Docker images. Yeah. Yes. 
but there's a good enhancement there if anyone wants to work on it. Earth, anything else on the Windows Docker image? So we've got a pull request ready. It needs needs review by by people who are expert in it that. Sounds, it sounds like it's it sounds like it's ready. The question that I have is: Should we merge this PR before next week weekly and um, stable release, or do we wait after those two releases? Good question. Basically, what I fear is with uh, DOS uh, off on Thursday and Friday, I fear that we may not have a lot of bandwidth if we detect an error before the next week, the next week releases. Yeah, Gareth, your 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 opinion? Would you be okay if this if we delayed until, let's say, next Thursday, so a week from? A week from nine days from now before this was merged yeah sure yeah there's there's no problem to start with that now and i guess one of the one of the gaps there is that i thought it was in november that microsoft expired or no microsoft's last security fix for 1809 happened so i guess even if it's last security fix, we're not really exposed until the next security fix comes out from Microsoft. Okay. Sure, I can wait a week. Great. But okay. worst case, but worst case scenario, we can we can rebuild the Docker image if we have to. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Just on Docker images, um, there's a plugin installation manager CLI pull request that's open. It would be good to get it merged. Oh, so this is for 2.1.2? Or is it even newer? Uh, at least that, yeah, I think, I think it's that one. Great. Uh, so there was, uh, we had a conversation yesterday uh, in the DocSig, uh, Tim. There was some, some issue or concern raised by Vlad Silverman asking if it's okay that we're using Plugin Installation Manager CLI everywhere in the documentation and continuing to use it even more. I'm assuming it is okay and that that's our strong preference. Does that make sense to you or are there places where we should not use it? I definitely use it. Um, the, the install plugin script is going to get the okay, uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm using it constantly for reproducing all of the tables to devs issues. Excellent. Thank you. That's good. That was that was my answer in the doc sig yesterday. You've confirmed it. Thanks very much. Yeah, I think we need to review the documentation and possibly clean up the install plugins um, stuff soon. Um, yes, yeah, I uh, think I, I think that plugin installation manager one went in. Uh, oh, good. Uh, let me check. Maybe it did. I can't see it. No, it did get merged. Oh. Very good. Okay, so then, so then that means two point two hundred sixty eight will have or already has. Yeah, we'll. Yeah, we'll have it. It's good. Okay. okay. Anything else on Windows Tucker image? Sounds like we can move on. And so this one was a topic for me, just to remind me, Olivier, I believe what I need to do is create and create a profile for stable dash two dot two sixty three. So, the, uh, so we have the are the, the, do you do you hear me correctly? I we do, yes. You're very audible. 
Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, everything is explained in the Jenkins request actually in Skip repository. So there is a bunch of instruction um, with a list of things that need to be done. So I think we have to create a branch on the Jenkins Infrast release. Um, inside that specific branch, we have to create, um, we have to update uh, a bunch of environment variables. And um, then we are ready to, to trigger the stable release. Um, but it's better to double check with the readme. And I let me take that action. I was the one who missed doing that for 2.249.1. I would love to be able to cement that mentally by doing it. Is that okay with you if I do it? Yes. That's all that I had. It's coming. Oh, and uh, change log and upgrade guide. Upgrade guide drafts coming very soon. Sorry that I'm late. The candidate is available. Ready for this. Perfect. It sounds like we are good for today's meeting. Any last topic that you want to bring here? I was just going to ask one. Okay. We've thought about. Yeah. Sorry. Um, um, Gera and OpenID Connect now that it's been moved over and using Keycloak more widely. Or, so, what's the, so what's the plan? Currently, we're still in the same situation where we're reliant on LDAC. Um, like, and we lost, we lost. So I time. had a look. Yeah, continue. Sorry. I was just so going to say, we, said we lost, lost that part of back in February. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically what now that Jira is, um, on running on the Linux foundation, we have to, to change the, um, the user directory. So right now we are doing the generic uh, user directory and we have to configure the open LDAP one. So we could, I mean, in that case, we would still be using open LDAP, but we could directly use Keycloak as well. We just have to, to configure Jira. Um, yeah, this is something that we should do in the coming weeks. I was, I was planning with that yesterday and um, this is something that we should plan to do. Okay, well, it'd be nice to use Keycloak because then we can turn on things like GitHub and Twitter and whatnot, so people don't have to sign up for accounts. Yeah, I totally, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I totally agree with you, and we just have to add one new. Um, with it. Yeah, I. I agree. Basically, um, yeah, I was playing with that yesterday. And, now, and is that is that something that we can change, or do we need to invoke the Linux Foundation people to make that level of change to Jira? So this is something that we can change. So we just uh, we still have access to the Jira administration um, to the admin accounts, and so we just have to add one additional configuration. So the first the first iteration we will be we will have two uh, connectors one. You using the correct, the current one that we have at the moment. And the second one that would be using the OHOT, um, an OHOT token. So we would, um, in the backend, it would be exactly the same user because in both cases, uh, user are coming from the same LDAP. But the thing is, once we, once we are able to connect uh, using Keycloak, we can remove the old, um, the old connector. We just have to confirm with um, the Linux, Linux Foundation that we won't override any configuration on their side, because I noticed that some there were some configuration that were done directly in the Java properties, uh, and so we may, um, yeah, we just have to double check with Linux Foundation folks that we can safely do implement this change, but it should be okay. Cool. Yeah, that'd be, be nice to do it. And it's um, I don't I don't know I don't know if you already did the, the experiment, uh, Tim. 
with configuring Jira and uh, uh, an OO token? I think I managed to get it working, but it was a bit difficult because I was running it in Docker um, and just getting the redirect URLs okay. mapping properly was a bit, bit of a pain. Um, I, th I think I managed to get it working. It was just, yeah, it was just a bit of a pain. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I got all the networking. Yeah, I should, I mean, I, I, I... I don't expect I don't expect and I don't expect that to be a lot of work. Um, yeah, it was just the logging was quite bad, I think, from what I remember. I think I got in and found that it was talking to local host when it should have been talking to host.docker.internal and it was that sort of issue. It was sort of the container of local host rather than key club. Um, it was it was all because I was running running from Docker. I'm sure. I'm sure it's fine to set up. That was just at least stuff I was hitting. Yeah, I didn't want to spend too much time on it um, before we migrate the instance to the Unix Foundation. Um, but I had a look yesterday because I was investigating some um, user issues, um, people who had issues to connect. By the way, while we are talking about Jiram, um, did you figure out the email email issues? No. Nope. No, not yet. Uh, okay. I haven't read this it. is something really weird because you, I, I had a look to SendGrid and SendGrid says that you, that you received email, um, but you were not the only person complaining about that. Um, so I still uh, have, um, I could spend more time investigating what's wrong here. Wait, I get some emails. I get, but at I least get... in my case, I'm receiving. Yeah. Do you get okay. notifications in the Jenkins project? Yes, I, get, I do. Oh. Yeah, I, get, I get notifications in the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in. Uh, then, then the problem is maybe elsewhere. Um, so I'm getting notification. I'm not. I'm not receiving notification from the Jenkins project because I'm not actively following that part. So maybe that's why. So maybe it's. Yeah, maybe there is <laughs> something that. wrong with that configuration. I'm sending you something. So, so Tim, did I get that correct? You get notification for infra tickets, but not for Jenkins tickets. Yes, people want me to do it for work. That's strange. So this huh. means that, yeah. So then it means that's a configuration on Jenkins project site. Which all black. Um, new feature. Cool. All right. So we are running out of time. Uh, so I propose to continue the discussion on our scene. Sure. Yeah. Um, so it's infra project and I get notification subscription emails as well. So if I've configured a subscription, that's, that works, but I don't get anyone pinging me or creating issues and assigning them okay. to me or anything. That, that I did not, I don't think I've been notified on anything for, so I'll, I'll just check. Maybe I've got a JIRA configuration mistake in mine. Okay. Um, okay. So let's, um, let's, let's finish this meeting and then let's investigate for this issue later on. Thanks everybody. Um, have a great day and see you on RC. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.